Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 17 of the WatchRolling.com podcast, a veteran-owned podcast that focuses on watch collecting with the goal of helping veterans. My name is Jason, and I'm your host. If you're new to the pod, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. Last week, we discussed the VA Summer Sports Clinic, and I also discussed the importance of relationships within the watch collecting community, especially for new watch collectors. Uh, It's pretty good. I really enjoyed that episode, and I thought the topic of how the importance of relationships within the watch collecting community are the real grails instead of the time pieces themselves. Speaking of that, I'd also like to uh, remind you that I'm also a co-host of a weekly Tuesday live stream every Tuesday evening at 7 30 PM Eastern standard time from with Sam from the casual watch talk YouTube channel or casual watch reviews, YouTube channel. Uh, this last week uh, we had a great time. We actually spoke to an, a tutor a- AD out of Florida. And he, his name is Justin, great guy. He was able to answer some really good questions and provide some information. And we also learned about some cool tutor uh, models that I didn't even know existed and some that I did. It was pretty interesting. We also have a Sunday live stream at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That one's a lot more social. It's kind of like a, we call it the Sunday social. And, and last week we had on Sam from a watch concierge service. And that was really interesting too, to learn about that service and how it operates over in Europe. Uh, I, I invite you to come check them out. I'll include the links in the show notes. They're a good time. And, you know, you can relax and unwind and talk talk watches. We tend to answer a lot of questions from the audience. And we have good interaction. So it's fun. One thing I want to address is that there's going to possibly be ads in this episode and the episodes going forward. Uh, I just want to put that out there because it's been ad-free before. Uh, and I don't know exactly how it works, but I signed up for the ads via Anchor. So, I want to explain that. I want to explain why. The goal of this podcast is to be able to provide funding to help the Veterans Watchmakers Initiative. And that's an initiative I covered all the way back in episode one. And it's a school in Odessa, Delaware, that basically teaches disabled veterans the art of watchmaking. You can go back and listen to episode one. There's a bunch of stuff in there. There's also a full review of the school on my blog. And long story short, if you're new to the podcast, this is a school that's been around since the 40s. They teach disabled veterans the art of watchmaking. And I mean like actually watchmaking, not just like building the watches. Uh, There's two separate courses, one for a technician and one for a watchmaker. They get a bunch of OJT. And at the end of it, they come out official watchmakers. They're not, like I said, just building the watches. They are actually building the tools to build the watches. It's all in a controlled environment. It's a formal education. And they're allowed to do an internship while they're there. And then they work in the service center when they get done to get some practical application of which they then, you know, can get hired to be watchmakers or work on their own. It's a great school. And whatever ad money I get, I'm going to make a contribution annually. And also for merch, I want to be able to donate to the school. Last year was the first year. I mean, it it wasn't the first full year I had the podcast. I only have only had the podcast for, uh, I think, basically a full year now, but coming up on it. But uh, I've been last year, I made a donation of my own personal money to the school because that's how much I believe in it. And I think it's just a great thing. So go check out the blog post, uh, the whole the whole review of the school and the breakdown, and check out episode one. If you don't know, it's a, it's a great it's a great school and it helps people an awful lot. If there's some interest in knowing more about the school, I can do a follow up episode on it. Uh, Delaware is not too far away. I could go there and, and do another follow up if they had the time. But just let me know. This week's episode is sponsored by Mushi Watch Traps. Mushi Watch Straps is a veteran-owned business and provides well-built and fairly priced NATO straps, two-piece straps, leather, and canvas straps, as well as watch tools, accessories, and storage. Uh, I've gone on now about the flu to NATO, but the one thing I want to talk about today is they have a blue canvas watch roll. Holds four watches. Uh, it, it, the website says it perfectly. You know, it's the perfect accessory for either storing your collection at home or protecting your watches while you're on the move. Th- this watch roll is suede lined, so it's super soft inside. The canvas is really well made and it's not too rough. I know sometimes you get canvas and it's it's almost like, you know, they should call it burlap instead of canvas, but or canvas. But anyways, um, the canvas is really nice. Uh, again, suede lining. It's got the little mushy logo in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, a nice little leather strap uh, with a with a rivet to where you can, you know, tie it up and and secure everything. And it holds four watches up to forty five millimeter in case diameter. They'll fit comfortably. I know I have a blue one and a tan one. 
and I use one for straps and I use one for watches when I travel. And the next time we take a trip, I'll be able to take some straps and a couple of watches and I'll be able to roll them up and they'll be all nice and safe and they don't take up very much room. So go check them out. Don't forget to use code VET10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. That's Victor Echo Tango 10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. I'll also include the link to Mushi Watch Straps in the show notes, and they can be found at www.mushiwatchstraps.com. All right, this week we're going to discuss the VA awarding $431 million in grants to help at-risk veterans and their families. And I discuss a special series of podcast episodes between episodes 20 and 30. And I want to kind of cover that for you so you understand my methodology as we build towards that, because I think it's going to be pretty cool. In veteran news, the VA awarded $431 million in grants to help at-risk families and their, and their at-risk veterans and their families. So on August 1st, uh, the VA awarded $431 million in grants to 258 nonprofit organizations across the nation. The primary goal is to help homelessness and at-risk veterans and their families. So the reason why I'm covering this, this strikes pretty close to home. Uh, I'll paraphrase here, but you know, right before I retired from the from the military from the Navy, I had a pretty bad leg injury. And it caused me to lose a job I had lined up. I had some interviews set up and I was in the interviewing process. I had a pretty good shot. Uh, we never know what can happen, but I had a pretty good shot. And when my leg basically blew up, that was it. Uh, the, that job, based on what I did as a firefighter in the Navy, I couldn't do it anymore. And, you know, the house at home I'd already had, I'd sold. And I basically had nowhere to go. Thankfully, I had family and I could stay with them while my leg healed up and all that stuff. But it was it was pretty touch and go, pretty dicey. And... I had to, you know, I had to find a job in order to get paid and all this other stuff. So I guess you could say at that at that time and place, I was a little bit at risk. And when I read about this and I started to look at all the stuff that they're doing in the wide swath of areas that they're helping, I felt like I needed to cover this. So, so the funds are being awarded through the VA Supportive Services for Veterans Families, and they're going to be available for use on one October. So to cover, kind of paraphrase what the Supportive Services for Veteran Families does. It's a VA RAM program. It's for very low income veterans. Uh, they provide case management and supportive services to help any veteran prevent the imminent loss of one of their homes or identify some new and more suitable housing for an individual uh, in their family. They can also uh, quickly get a veteran into a home when they call it rehouse and their families who are homeless or might remain homeless without this assistance. I will put this website on there as well. They have the news and events on there covered. Uh, it, it's it's pretty interesting. I think it's a good program. I mean, a lot of times having a safe place to be. Uh, I know for a lot of people, you know, when it comes to employment too, it's it's difficult. You don't have a permanent address and all that stuff. It could be it could be hard. So it, it'd be nice to get the, a fellow veteran settled in so they could actually go and, and get some stuff done for themselves. So these grants enable community organizations. In a number of ways, they help with outreach. They uh, help with case management. They also help access healthcare, some financial planning. Which I'll be honest, uh, as a as a slightly poor kid coming out of Southern California, I had no idea what the heck financial planning was. Uh, I went to boot camp. We didn't get any, and I had this paycheck for the first time in my life. And and I'll be you know, being really honest, I did not financial plan anything for a long time. And so it's kind of nice if you can get that, even if it's that late stage when you're a veteran. They also help with child care, legal assistance, transportation, housing counseling, and other services. So the reason why the VA secretary wants to do this is because they don't believe anyone should be homeless in this country, especially veterans. And they want to use these grant funds to help these different partner organizations across the country get some stuff done for veterans. So according to the VA stats, this calendar year alone, they already placed more than 19,000 homeless veterans into permanent housing. And that puts them on track to accomplish their goal of 38,000 permanent housing placements in 2022. So I'm going to keep track of that to kind of go back at the end of the year and see what they did. Last year's fiscal year, they served over 114,000 participants, including 80,000 veterans and some change and over 19,000 children. So it's it's awesome. There's a whole long list of grantees. I got the list here and just to cover a couple of them, you know, there's like the Goodwill Industries in New Mexico, Virginia Supportive Housing, California Veterans Assistance Foundation, there's the Northwest Michigan Community Action Agency. Uh, there's there's just a ton of stuff. Like I said, there's over 258 University of Vermont and State Agriculture College. And, and those are just some 
some examples of what Hope Center in South Central Virginia. I mean, just just tons of stuff. So I will put the links to all these in the show notes so you can see them. And if you if you know anyone in your life that might be having a struggle or, or a hard time with housing or home, you know, home, having a home, and they're veterans, please tell them to check that out because it could very much help them going forward in the future. And like I said, I'll follow up at the end of the year to see what the stats are as far as how many people they helped and stuff. And I think that's pretty important. And the watch related news. All right. So this is, I heard a podcast once where they said they had half baked ideas and this is a half baked idea I have, but I I wrote some bullet points down. I want to discuss it because I feel like, I don't know. I feel like this is a cool, a cool little project. And what it really will help me do is get back to the fact that I want to approach this podcast as, you know, a veteran owned podcast that helps fellow veterans with veterans resources, but remain the focus of helping new watch collectors um, as well. And I I think I've kind of gotten away from that a little bit. Um, I want to get back to that and have a a structured series of podcast episodes where the veteran related news will stay the same, but the watch related stuff is going to be focused on helping newer watch collectors. If something weird happens and a hot story comes up or something, I I might do an impromptu recording in between there to talk about whatever hot related, you know, watch related news are. But I want to have between episodes 20 and 30, 10 dedicated episodes that discuss what I've learned over my time as a new watch collector. So for those of you that are just new to the pod or haven't been following, I've only been collecting watches for about three years. And I mean, that's just enough time to know that I don't know anything like we talked about in the previous episode. Uh, but it's also enough time to realize I've made some mistakes. I should be able to share that information. So hopefully you don't make the same mistake and then offer some insight into if I had known then what I know now, the approaches I would take to purchasing watches as I'm newer in the watch collecting sphere. So I hope that sounds pretty interesting, right? And why am I doing this? Well, because I want to approach this from the angle and I want to provide you some information, like actionable information that you can use that's helpful. I feel like I, I kind of looked at my last, you know, 16 episodes and, you know, while they're, I, I'm proud of them, I don't know how much I actually help. And I want to get to the point to where I help. Like, I know I help with the veteran stuff, but I'd like to help with the watch related stuff too. So it's going to be a 10 episode special. Uh, in episode 19, when I release that, I'm going to give you the 10 topics that I'm going to cover the 10 topics and discuss each topic like really shortly because I don't want to give too much away. So you have an idea of what's coming up and I'm actually going to develop a methodology to where it kind of builds to the purchase, if that makes sense. Uh, but I have another idea for that too. It might build to the purchase and then what to do post-purchase because I think nobody ever talks about the post-purchase and I want to talk about post-purchase. So that's what it's going to be. Uh, it'll be a breakdown, like I said, on my top 10 listens for new watch collectors. Uh, all the VA related content is going to stay the same. And then I'm going to give my thoughts on why this is important and just give you the background of what spurred this. So the last couple of weeks, I've just been doing live streams on the casual watch review uh, YouTube channel with Sam. And we have uh, the other two hosts that usually pop up. Or, you know, we, we have like five regulars usually based on people's availability. It'll be, you know, Sam, myself, it'll be Todd. And Todd is a collector. We we jokingly call him the Seiko chronograph expert, but or vintage Seiko chronograph expert. But that's he knows a lot more than that. But that's like his sweet spot. He really digs those things. But Todd has a wealth of knowledge. And we also have Patrick, who uh, ditto. But Patrick loves pocket watches. He has the uh, pocket watch YouTube channel. And you know, Sam has been a watch collector forever. So their, their, their overall collective knowledge has just taught me some stuff. And by listening to them talk, I'm like, man, every time these guys speak, they're given nuggets of information out They're They're teaching us stuff and, that we can learn from that. If I was a new watch collector and I knew at the time, I might be able to actually do something about, but I didn't run across these guys. I didn't know them before. So all in all, the live streams have really influenced me to give this a go. And I want to be able to provide you some stuff. So when I do this 10 series steps, I'm going to do it in a systematic approach to where it's almost like a checklist. Now, you don't have to do it. But for anyone that's military related, I can tell you right now, we love some stinking checklists. 
right? We don't reinvent the wheel. If there's a procedure or something that's been around that works for a while, yeah, we might, you know, we trust, but we you know, trust, but inspect, we make sure it still works. But if we do it and it works, I'm not going to go invent a whole brand new document to do something if this has worked for the last 15 years, right? Now, if a new thing pops up and you got to add something to it, or you got to take something away, there's a new requirement, then so be it. But I tend to think that we in the military just don't go reinventing stuff just to do it. So if I could provide a checklist for the newer watch collector, they're like, oh yeah, I thought I didn't think about this. Because let's be honest, I could do 10 things and I'm probably not going to cover everything. There might be more stuff and I can update it later. But you know, I've I've already spitballed 10 ideas for 10 things that would help me out in the or help out any other newer watch collector uh, going forward. So that's what I want to do. And I want to be able to help that way. So, uh, and that's it for the watch related news. Stand by for that. Uh, tune into the live streams. And, and I think you have a lot of fun. Uh, today's closing thoughts. You know, I appreciate you turning into episode 17. Episode 20 is right around the corner. That's why I want to do that special series of 10 episodes. Cause I feel like episode 20, I mean, maybe I'm too attached to the idea of, you know, fives stuff happening in fives or, or, or happy moments like, you know, episode 15, and then episode 20, you know, I, I probably got to pump my brakes with that because what am I going to do? Something special every five episodes. But episode 20 feels kind of big to me. I want to have a series of stuff that helps you out. And I appreciate you turning into the last 17 episodes. It really, it, it's cool. I get to see the numbers of who's tuning in from where. I have a, a one person that listens in the Bahamas and one person that listens uh, in Greece. And, you know, I got some, I got some actually quite a few listeners in Australia which so thanks for tuning in from Australia. And uh, it's, it's just been pretty cool. I recently was able to update and add the podcast to Apple or iTunes this last week when I got the new computer, something about my old computer wasn't let me do it, but the new ones let me do it. So the podcast is up on iTunes now. So I ask you if you get a chance, you know, leave a review on Spotify, leave a review on iTunes. Uh, I honestly don't even know how much it helps the channel, but everyone says it helps the channel. So, Hey, if you want to leave me a review, uh, I appreciate it. And, just thanks for being along for the ride so far. I look forward to pumping out, I don't know, hopefully another 170 more episodes and keep this thing going. Uh, don't forget to tune into the live streams on Tuesday evenings at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Sundays at 6 uh, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at the Casual Watch Reviews YouTube channel. They're a whole lot of fun. And you can never uh, – we never really go which way the conversation is going, but it always ends up in a good place and and you learn a lot. And, and I invite you especially for the Sunday one. The Sunday one's a social one. Tune in, ask questions, um, tell your friends about it. You know, we always have someone moderating the questions, so we make sure your questions get asked. And then whoever's on the panel, we usually have someone who can address that question for you. And uh, it's it's always pretty fun. So, and, and you don't have a whole lot of drama. That's not how we operate. So I just invite you to check it out. So this week's positive affirmation is, is going to be a little hard, um, but I want to I want to get this on. A recording. I have a good friend of mine. Uh, his name's John, and I'll leave it at that. And, and John's struggling with some physical things right now, and, and he's basically my brother, you know, for all extents and purposes. We've known each other for a long time. Uh, it's it, it, the funny thing about the military is we couldn't be more different yet more similar in the same sentence, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, I just want to put on tape that that I love you like a brother, man. And I've told you this before, and you, and you know this, but. I want something safe for posterity. Um, you, you've been a big part of my life. You've been there for me when when times are hard, and I try to be there for you when times are hard. Uh, I fully believe that everything's going to be okay. I know you're strong, bro. I know your family's strong, and, and, and we're strong for you too. But there's no way I'm not going to have a podcast and at least let the world know how how. And I've and I've told you this too, but I want it out there that that you're special. You're special to me, and you're special to my family. And um, we're going to keep fighting, bro. All right. So I just ask everybody to put some positive thoughts out there for my buddy. Um, and and I appreciate it if you do. And I know he will, too. And just remember, at watchrolling.com, you make the watch. The watch doesn't make you. <laughs>